This is ABC Fora. Sally, before we move on to the decline of John Howard, just, just your thoughts on that, the two sides of Kevin Rudd, because you've seen him behind the scenes. Very few people in the audience will have. Well, I, one of the things that um, surprises me is that usually I think when people get power, they, they kind of become more powerful. It's like they put an overcoat on and they're yes. suddenly more powerful. Um, I first met Kevin Rudd when he was the shadow foreign minister and then um, over the time he was opposition leader and then prime minister. And uh, one of the things I must say about him is, is an incredible consistency in his character. Um, and it's not that he's not a, a powerful kind of person, although he, he's not like Paul Keating with that kind of... I think in person that you, you, you sort of almost sort of fall over. There's just something radioactive um, <laughs> about him. Um, with, I, I find Kevin Rudd to be a very consistent person and it's not that he hasn't put that coat on and, 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 and fallen into the shoes of being the leader of the land. I think it's as much about a confidence that he always had and perhaps always projected. So, I mean, I've seen a few uh, sides of him too, but, but it's the consistency of him over that time that I find more interesting. He really hasn't changed, um, particularly in my mind. He has a, a Napoleonic drive and a surprising energy. He um, doesn't. Mike Rand said to me, you think I don't sleep? This man really doesn't sleep. And it is amazing. And of course, it's caused havoc in the lives of his uh, staff, who, <laughs> 67% of whom have left in the, in the exhaustion. Is that higher than his or, ratings at the moment? Uh, it, <laughs> I'm sure, but, yep. uh, but you know, there's, uh, there's an element of what I call pointless tyranny <laughs> in his uh, dealings with his staff and his ministry. All right, enough of him for a moment, uh, because the fall of uh, John Howard is the other well, in fact, the flip side of the rise of Kevin Rudd. So uh, you tell an anecdote at the beginning of your book, which is quite telling. Uh, it's about uh, an ad team meeting uh, to talk about planning out a strategy for the Liberal Party and how it falls asleep. Um, that's exactly uh, how it was. The election, uh, how I think it was about six weeks before Howard would call the election and the, the meeting was getting a briefing uh, from the pollster, Mark Texter, who featured in the last anecdote. And Texter was in the process of explaining all the research data that the party had assembled on Howard and the government and was explaining to the ad team uh, uh, the, the problem they had and the problem they had to overcome. Uh, they said the good, he said the good news is that uh, Howard is still seen uh, with some residual affection in the electorate. People think he's a, a strong leader who believes in things stands for something. The bad news is um, people now think he's uh, old, tired and out of touch. Uh, and as Texter delivered this rather tough assessment, uh, heads in the room swiveled to see how John Howard was taking the news. And as you say, Tony, only to discover that the Prime Minister had fallen asleep. That's, uh, he did say comfortable and relaxed. <laughs> Yes, he, it, it was his ultimate aim and he, he attained it. Now, I should say for the record <laughs> that um, when that anecdote was put to him, Howard uh, completely denied that that had ever happened. He called it absolute tripe. Uh, however, I have from two other people in the room, not, not only did it happen, but that it was uh, so forceful a, a, a reinforcement of the research message that w when they went out after the meeting into the hallway, they talked about it and said, wow, did you see that? You know. Maybe, maybe we've got a problem because maybe the electorate has it right. I was, I was talking to Tony Abbott on Thursday night the way I occasionally do out of court. <laughs> <laughs> and he confirmed for me two, two stories. He confirmed for me two stories that I believed. One, that Howard was prepared to go in, uh, I think, 06, but the McLaughlin's revelation of the Kirribilli equivalent deal uh, forced him out of pride not to go because it would seem that he was being nudged publicly by Costello to do so, and second, that he was absolutely prepared to go in September before the election during APEC, but that he, he made the grave mistake of having decided to go of going home and telling his wife about it. Yeah, actually and not, on, not only his wife, but his family uh, 
were outraged by the thought and rather miserably he put on the, uh, the concrete boots and, <laughs> and walked slowly towards his extinction knowing it was coming. This is ABC Fora.